This is from the website users.atom.com.au and the title is William Connolly First Watchtower Society President and uh, I've never really done a video on this topic before I may have um, hinted at this once on my old channel but I would like to read this to you and uh, because there's some little goodies in here History revised. For over 100 years, Russellites and Jehovah's Witnesses forgot William Connolly, who helped get their religion started. Pittsburgh businessman Connolly, 1840-1897, was a founder of the Watchtower in 1881 and its first president prior to its incorporation. The better-known Charles T. Russell was the president from its incorporation in 1884. This was discovered by Barbara Anderson when working as research assistant for the Watchtower Society book Jehovah's Witness Proclaimers of God's Kingdom from 1993, which mentions Connolly on page 576. <clears throat> Anderson was a JW for 43 years and a member <clears throat> of the Watchtower writing department. She subsequently defected from the sect and maintains a website on which she offers CDs with extensive collections of information. The Society in the Beginning The Watchtower, initially named Zion's Watchtower Track Society, was founded in February 1881 as an association. Its president was Connolly, Vice President Joseph Russell, C.T. Russell, Russell's father, and Secretary-slash-Treasurer C.T. Russell. Connolly donated $3,500 of the original 5000 capital, Joseph Russell 1000 and C.T. Russell 500 In its first year, the Watchtower spent $40,000, donated mainly by Connolly, on the book Food for Thinking Christians and Other Free Literature. Connolly and his wife, Sarah, were among the five original Bible students with which the Russell cult started in 1872-73. The other three were C.T. Russell, his sister Margaret, and their father, Joseph Russell. The Connollys and Russells became acquainted about 1870 at the Advent Christian Church, where they listened to Second Adventist preachers such as Jonas Wendell, George Stetson, and George Storrs. Advent Christians experienced controversy in the 1870s due to belief in Christ's imminent return and the burning up of the world. This possibly led Connolly and Russell to start separate meetings. The Russells had built J.L. Russell and Son, a chain of five men's clothing stores. Connolly was much wealthier. He was co-owner of Ryder Connolly Company a metal fabrication company that supplied mining and other industries. In the late 1880s, Ryder Connolly had over 600 employees. In 1876, the Russell Connolly sect amalgamated with some Second Adventists led by Nelson Barber. Barber's cult had predicted Christ's visible return for 1873, 1874, 1875, and then opted for an invisible return that occurred in 1874. This is the origin of the uh, Jehovah's Witness doctrine of Christ's invisible second coming, which until 1930 they placed in 1874 before transferring it to 1914. <clears throat> The combined Barber slash Russell cult predicted the rapture for 1878 when the living saints would ascend physically to heaven. Some of them gathered in white robes on a bridge in Pittsburgh on Passover night, but the prophecy failed. A. H. McMillan, who became known as the Grand Old Man of the JW Movement, referred to this event in his Watchtower Society approved book, Faith on the March. He asked, Russell about it and Russell said however some of the more radical ones might have been there but I was not. <clears throat> in 1879 Russell and Barber separated. Russell started the magazine Zion's Watchtower and also predicted 1881 for the rapture. 
At this stage, Connolly was still important in Russell's cult. In 1880 and 81, the Allegheny City venue for the annual remembrance of Christ's death was Connolly's home from Zion's Watchtower, April 1881, page 208. But in 1882, the venue was the home of Joseph Russell. Another important split up occurred in 1882. Barber's former co-editor, John H. Patton, had sided with the Russell faction in 1879, but split from Russell in 1882. The reasons were Russell's false prophecy for 1881, Patton's belief in universal salvation, which Russell called heresy, the Trinity doctrine, which Russell rejected in 1882, the ascent of the living saints to heaven, which Patton placed near 1914, but Russell still awaited sooner. <clears throat> Connolly's loyalties also changed. In 1882, he stopped giving large donations to Russell and his name stopped appearing in Zion's Watchtower. In 1884, Russell incorporated the society to more effectively handle legal and financial matters, and Connolly disappeared as president. Connolly joined the Presbyterian Church, which believes in the Trinity and conscious eternal punishment for the wicked. It did not believe that Jesus returned in 1874, nor believed in Russell's reinterpretation of the 1878 date, which was that Jesus set up his kingdom in 1878 and dead Christians were resurrected to heaven. Connolly's religious shift, therefore, suggests extensive repudiation of much of what he previously believed. Apparently, he also accepted Lutheran beliefs since the book Theocratic Kingdom by Lutheran minister George N. H. Peters included an acknowledgement of financial assistance from Connolly. Later, Connolly also supported an orphanage, school and hospital in Pittsburgh, sponsored religious conventions, and organized and funded a Christian mission in Jerusalem. A letter from Connolly in Zion's Watchtower, 1894, supported Russell when a further rift occurred and four elders tried to remove Russell from power. Zion's Watchtower introduced the letter by presenting Connolly as a member of the early Allegheny Bible class, without disclosing that he was the society's first president. And if you want to pause it, you can read that. Connolly's death was not announced in Zion's Watchtower, although the deaths of Stetson and Storrs and Joseph Russell merited notices. John H. Patton, however, announced Connolly's death in his magazine, The World's Hope, and stated that he had stayed at the Connolly home many times over the past 20 years. And if you want to read that, you can pause that. Conclusion, the article John H. Patton, forgotten co-founder of a sect in Investigator 18, presented Patton as the forgotten co-founder and as one of five men who were significant in helping Charles T. Russell start the Watchtower movement. We can now recognize William Connolly as a sixth significant man as well as another forgotten co-founder. And you can check out this website here if you wish.